Let's look at uh, one more example of uh, application of angular momentum before we move on to the angular momentum of a rotating rigid object. A particle of mass m moves in a circle of radius capital R at a constant speed v. So we have uniform circular motion. The motion begins at point Q at time t is equal to zero. So at time t is equal to zero, we are at point Q. Determine the angular momentum of the particle about the axis perpendicular to the page through point P. So angular momentum of the particle about the axis perpendicular to the page through point P as a function of time. So I would like to know what is the angular momentum as a function of time for an axis perpendicular to the page through point P. So let me look at the setup of this uh, problem in more detail. So I have uh, here the position vector of my particle that is performing this uniform circular motion and it's at a distance capital R from the origin. So this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, uh, and i hat cross j hat is k hat, so the z-axis is coming out of the board. And uh, I need to know the angular momentum with respect to point P here, so that means I'm interested in the position vector not with respect to the origin, but with respect to point P. So I need to draw an, a position vector r uh, with respect to point P. And as time goes by, because the particle started its motion at point Q at t is equal to zero, uh, as time goes by, because it's moving with constant angular, uh, constant speed v, I know that in uniform circular motion, v is equal to omega times t. So this is rotating with angular speed omega in this circle. Uh, therefore, what is the angular displacement theta that I have gone through in time t? Theta is equal to omega t because omega is the angular speed d theta dt and it's a constant of this motion okay therefore the angle angular displacement i have uh, with respect to the x-axis is omega times t okay um, so that's going to allow me to calculate the magnitude of the r vector here so if i look at this uh, carefully, if I drop a perpendicular uh, to the r vector here, I see that I can use the angle here uh, in order to calculate the magnitude of the r vector. Uh, how so? So I have, uh, because this side is r, and the other side is R, this triangle, OPA uh, triangle, OPA triangle, is isosceles. Two sides are equal, R and R. So if I drop a perpendicular uh, to R, I'm going to get two equal angles. So this angle will be equal to this angle. And what are those two angles? If I call that angle phi, phi, that angle phi is 180 minus omega t divided by 2. So the angle will be 90 minus omega t divided by 2. So using this uh, OHP right triangle, 
I can find uh, the magnitude of the R vector and because these two uh, lengths will be equal, uh, magnitude of the R vector divided by 2 is going to be equal to uh, R sine phi which is R sine 90 minus omega t divided by 2 so magnitude of the r vector is 2r cosine omega t over 2 <clears throat> so that's the position vector of this particle with mass m uh, with respect to the point p on the xy plane okay and when I try to calculate the angular momentum, I have to take R cross with P. So uh, let me look at this angle between uh, these two. So this R vector uh, and the linear momentum vector uh, V, uh, they're going to have an angle. So what is this angle? Uh, well, this angle here is going to be equal to uh, omega t. Uh, so, I will have phi plus omega t, so it plus 90 degrees here. This, this should add up to uh, 180. So, if phi is 90 minus omega t over 2, that angle should be omega t divided by 2, right? So omega t minus 2 plus phi, 90 minus omega t over 2. So that's going to give me 90 plus 90, 180 in the OHA triangle. So that angle is omega t over 2. All right. And so what is the angle between... Uh, the r vector and v vector so that angle is uh, this one this angle and what is this angle because the uh, this angle plus omega t over 2 should add up to 90 degrees the velocity vector is perpendicular to the uh, radial vector uh, from the origin that angle should be equal to 90 minus omega t over 2. All right. So 90 minus omega t over 2, which means the angle between the two uh, vectors, r vector and mv vector, will be this angle. And that angle should be 90 plus omega t over 2 because the two angles should add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so if I use the cross product, uh, R cross with P, so this is my uh, R vector, this is my uh, P vector here, that's the P vector. If I take the cross product, R cross with P, I can see that this will be in plus k hat direction because my z axis is uh, coming out of the board all right so let's work with these uh, calculations to figure out the angular momentum okay so the angular momentum l will be r cross with mv okay so magnitude wise this will be Magnitude of R, uh, MV, and sine of the angle between them. So it's going to be sine of 90 plus omega t over 2. And magnitude of vector R, uh, I have just calculated, is 2R cosine omega t over 2. Then I have mv and sine of 90 plus omega t over 2 is cosine omega t over 2. So my answer for the magnitude of the L vector will be 2r cosine square omega t over 2 
times mass times velocity. So I can write this in a nicer way because I can use this property cosine omega t is 2 cosine square omega t over 2 minus 1. That's the half angle formula. So in order to replace 2 cosine square omega t over 2, I can use cosine omega t plus 1. This is 2 cosine square omega t over 2. Two. So, so let's plug this here. The magnitude of the angular momentum with respect to point P is uh, mv uh, times r uh, times 1 plus cosine omega t and its direction is k hat's direction. But the problem here is omega is not a given in this problem, but I know that there is a relationship between v and omega. v is equal to omega times r. So instead of omega, I can substitute v over r. Then I can say that this angular momentum with respect to point P is mvr 1 plus cosine vt over r in k hat direction so this will be my final answer for the angular momentum